Welcome to Sacred Stories Podcast, a place to explore and discuss new and exciting books of consciousness. I am your host, Reverend Patricia Caginello, and speaking with authors that have shared their wisdom and stories through their books is one of my favorite things to do. Today, we are speaking with New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Bernie Siegel, and his grandson, Charlie Siegel. Bernie and Charlie have co-authored a new book of poetic short writings that is based on the quote, When you realize how perfect everything is, you will tilt your head back and laugh at the sky. Their new book titled, When You Realize How Perfect Everything Is, shares their belief that the imperfections of life are truly what is perfect about it. So welcome, Bernie and Charlie Siegel, to Sacred Stories. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is a real pleasure. Uh, You know, I'm... This has just been a joy, you know, uh, working with the two of you to, you know, really, really bring your voices, this conversation, this multi-generational conversation that the two of you have, you know, to the world. Well, I think what connected us, you know, to put things together, I was writing some other things and papers I found in the house on spirituality and so forth and so on and the, sharing them with Charlie and the things I got back from him kind of blew my mind if I may say it that way that you know because I think of myself as a surgeon learning from all, all the pain and all that was stored up inside of me and it was a long job you know to find faith and and healing and and here it was coming out of Charlie, like he was 90 years old um, and had lived all this already. So I, I just felt like a heart to heart connection. And then I know his photography of nature, which is a great teacher for me too. I, I, I was always talking about what I learned from a tree because I had nailed up a fence to contain all our animals. Our house was like a zoo between the house and the yard. So I had a fence and I noticed a tree grew around the nails and took them in. And I thought, wow, maybe if people could do that, you know, instead of reacting in pain and misery to the nails, just grow around them and make them a part of you. So it it was just things like that happening and, and his relationship to nature. And then I learned that he also had written poems because the poems were my way of getting what was inside of me out. You know, it's like keeping a journal. Oh yeah, people would often say to me, that's not a poem, it doesn't rhyme. And I'd say, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, it's more about the life that's stored in me. Uh, I'm not trying to just make it rhyme. I'm trying to get what's within me out. And I felt that so in Charlie, and you consider I'm almost three times as old as he is. Um, Where did he learn all this? So Charlie, maybe you want to, you know, what made you wake up way ahead of time? Um, I think a lot of it was growing up in my mom's store. My mom started Wisdom of the Ages when I was three. Um, It's in Simsbury, Connecticut, and she teaches meditation classes and spiritual development classes and um, is helping people all the time through her works there. So um, just like I was homeschooled and I did a lot of my work in the back of the store there and um, just being in that environment and kind of growing up around like people helping people in a spiritual kind of sense um, that I wanted to find my own way of doing that. So um, writing just kind of came out of it. Like I, I was having a lot of fun, like making up stories and writing and stuff since I was a kid. Um, and then it became something more serious as I started to put together poems and, and short stories and um, came out with a novel. And um, like I wanted to, to um, have my own way of doing things that would help people to like to brighten up and connect with the good stuff inside of themselves. Right. So, well, so- let me, I got to share something now. Got to interrupt because what we're learning, there are no, no coincidences. I learned that years ago from Elizabeth Cooper Ross. And I'm flipping through, you know, on my computer, all the poems I wrote looking for a specific one. But when Charlie said it was his mother, what popped right up on my screen? I wrote this, mother, what can I give you on Mother's Day? 
No card is clever enough. No jewel sparkles enough. No words say enough. Perhaps one gift is enough, my life, to thank you for it, to live it with the love you bestowed upon it, and to share that love with all the world. You are now the mother of the world. You are Eve in the garden. Now, I don't remember writing all these things, <laughs> but that's what fascinates me. He says, mother, and bow, right in front of me. It were those words I wrote years ago. So forgive me that's for cool. interrupting, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, it's just part of what we're writing about. Yeah. So it's, so let's just frame this for a second because it's actually, there's so much to this discussion and, and really this book is so rich in, in the, the passing of the love and the wisdom, you know, through the generations, but not just down to the younger generation, but up, you know, this is what's happening in this conversation. You know, the energy goes both ways, but Bernie, let's without, you know, forgive me for asking, but, but approximately how old are you now? You say you're three times as old as Charlie. Um, I'm, <laughs> I stopped to do the math. I'm 87. I'll be 88 in October. Okay, so you're 87, and that, it's just phenomenal. At 87, I want to be still releasing books and sharing, sharing wisdom. And Charlie, you are, how old are you? 25. Charlie's 25. So we have this relationship, you know, the grandfather and the grandson. And Charlie, you bring in your mother in it. And, and when Bernie said, like, how did you wake up so early? And you said, learning from your mother. And so there's just such a richness within the passing of wisdom through relationships. Would you? Definitely. Right, Charlie, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and um, you know, I've always loved writing. And like, since I was a little kid, I was saying I was coming up with stories and stuff. But seeing Grandpa Bernie's success as like he's announced as a New York Times bestselling author when we're coming on, like um, that, that part of that gives me like the hope and the, and the follow through that like, hey, I can do that too. And this is a, a way that I can, um, you know, do what I want to do in life and help people and um, like my own grandfather's doing it. I can him too so to have that connection with him is um, is cool and to bring our works together in one piece one project uh, it's something really special that I'm glad we get to share together mm. Bernie you said Charlie is also your teacher can you talk a little bit about he's your oldest grandson how how or what you've learned from Charlie well it's it's about life about nature I think we're teaching each other you know, through our experiences. But as I say, what impressed me is how through his poetry, all these things, it's like he's gotten to where I am a lot faster. So there are things, it's hard to put in specific words, but we'll talk about something and he'll bring forth what he's learned and it enlightens me. And that's why it's like all the poetry you know, that I will show something and he'll say, look at this that I wrote. And that we're bouncing up and back all these feelings, emotions, insights, spiritual, mystical. It's just, you know, amazing. And, um, and when I say amazing, it, it's, I think all the years it took me to be able to bring this forth, because uh, an interesting point in, in college, I got one C in four years, and that was in creative writing, because I was in science, you know, going to be a doctor, and it was hard for me to stop thinking, and I think that's what connected me to Charlie. Yes, we're thinking now, but in a different way. It's like talking to God. It's like that spirit, mystical, inner voice that's talking and you just write it down what they tell you. So I tell this to people now that I have an angel named George. I mean, he told me his name and that I don't, if I'm go going to give a lecture, I don't prepare. I just get up and George tells me what to say. And what I try to get across to people is if you're watching television, the television set doesn't create the program. I mean, it, it creates the image, but it doesn't write the script. And that's what I learned to do now, to let the program come forth, not thinking about it, but just to deliver it. So it comes from a higher resource. 
where there's much greater wisdom and knowledge. The, the book, and, and it's so absolutely true, and the book is structured in a way that it truly is a conversation between a grandfather and a grandson. It's broken down into seven sections, right? So we have destiny, emotion, relationships, um, all the way, inner light, all the way through Hello God. So we start with destiny and we end with Hello God. But each of the writings alternate between you, Bernie, and you, Charlie. So it, it truly is. And um, it was fascinating working with the two of you to, to organize and bring together this large you know, collection of writings that the two of you did individually. But when you brought it together, it was really like a, a conversation. It's just so incredibly beautiful. And Bernie, what I, you said earlier that I think is so insightful in the sense of that you learned through or opened through the pain of being a surgeon, of, 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 of working to help others. And your writings, are your writings speak very much to almost the matter of factness of life. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, that's a perspective, a, a kind of a, a a learned, lived perspective through your experiences. And Charlie, your voice, to me, speaks to the young idealist of life. You know, that you see the beauty in, in everything, which is, which we need that voice. We need to see through your eyes as well. You know, would you agree that that is your main voice as well, Charlie? Um, I think that makes sense. Yeah, that that kind of view of it, and that, like, so we've each written these poems completely separately, like in our own houses and in all different towns, and then we share them together after they're done. And like, that's when it's this amazing connection that it's like we're having a conversation without knowing it. Um, and to the point of my own voice, and I I found a kind of like a poem, kind of like a prayer the other day when I was scrolling through Facebook, it came up, it's an, it's an old Franciscan benediction. And the end of it, um, it says, and may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. And I, I saw that and I was like, oh, that, that kind of fits with what um, Patricia was talking about with um, kind of like this, um, this hopeful kind of tone that comes out across my work as she's been helping us put it together and review it. Um, that, hey, it's, it's kind of like a, like a foolishness that is like what is best for people to have. Like you need that, that hopefulness and like, like somebody needs to be positive kind of thing. And, I, and that's, that's part of my drive is that I want to um, be one of those people and help, um, help other people see where they can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if, if you don't mind, while, while you're talking, um, one of the questions, I mean, part of why, what led me to this was, why would God, and I'm serious when I talk this way, go, why would God make a world like this? You know, I, I did a lot of pediatric surgery, and why would God, you know, create children who have deformities, uh, you know, that aren't normal, that need surgery, uh, that will never be completely healthy. I mean, it, it just seemed crazy to me. If I were the creator, I would have made everything. Um, but here, I, I, again, a poem in front of me, perfect. God didn't ask my wife to be perfect. I did. So I ought to be perfect and set an example. Well, there goes my plan. I'd rather tell her how to be perfect, but then she tells me about my imperfections. There goes my plan again. I guess God was right. His plan is easier. Just give them free will in life because perfection is not creation. That sentence really struck me because perfection is not creation. And don't forget to keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> I didn't know where that came from. But um, yeah, if we had a perfect world, we'd all be going nuts. And I mean that literally. I always say you'd come to a street corner, wave to the other car to go ahead and they wave back at you because everybody's loving everybody and nobody's driving anywhere. But it's, you know, we have to understand that a perfect world isn't creation and that we are here to become co-creators with our Lord. Can I read that poem now? Hello, God. Uh, uh, well, hold, we hold, 
just wait just a moment because before right. you read that, because I want to bookend, um, but the poem you just read, perfect, is it? Isn't and, and one, one more point. that was near, near this, just a few quick sentences. Should we argue or make love? Let's think about the world. Shall we have an argument or make love? There are benefits to both. If we argue, I show you how smart and right I am. I can yell and sulk and turn away and try to sleep now that I won the argument. And that's what God is trying to get us to all understand. Love. God is love. I always say God is loving, intelligent. So Bernie and Charlie, so the, the, the overriding concept of, of this book is that the imperfections of life is what is perfect about it. And Bernie, that's what you've, you've been speaking to, is that, right? That the imperfections yeah. are what is perfect about it. Charlie, can you... Can you share with us why that why that is so meaningful to you? Um, and and we you titled the book when you realize how perfect everything is. Share share where that comes from. Yeah, that that quote has always really spoken to me. Um, that I've I've heard it said that it comes from a like a Buddhist perspective, um, and I see connections with it with that kind of viewpoint. That it's it's like about accepting that. Um, so one of the tenets in Buddhism, they talk about life is suffering, and it's it's meant to be like accepting that as like, well, it is, and then like, what are you going to do about it kind of thing, um, that like, if you keep staying down and like, things are not perfect, and things are difficult, or there's hardships that um, you're kind of staying in the problem, and it's when you get into a like, what are you going to do about it kind of perspective, that then that the imperfections become what's really perfect about it. That when you see like the hardships and, and struggles that somebody goes through and then you see how they handle it and they come out like stronger and kind of like the like the next leveled up version of themselves. Um, because like, hey, I handled that, I did that and I learned something from it, um, then it makes them better. So it, it's that continual um, progress of, of growth that where it makes those imperfections in life really be perfect so like the the suffering is there but like if you accept it and uh, my mom teaches appling things acknowledge accept process let it go and then like hey what are you going to do about it it, it becomes a, a better a, a good thing in the end yeah i always thought about life you know as perfectly imperfect and that was another way you know why i connected with charlie because you know, he starts using the word perfect in the title of the book. And, and, and then I always had that concept of it's perfectly imperfect. And so, again, it's, that was what kept drawing us together. No matter what came up, uh, there was always that, you know, little bit of glue that pulled us together. Yeah, there's a cool connection there with, um, like with us on a personal level and in like a, like a work that we do level. Um, it all comes together. The, you know, it's, Bernie, is, uh, as the two of you are talking, and Bernie, when you were reading your other poem, um, you know, you, there's many poems in the book that's about your wife, right? right. And, and I absolutely love all of those poems. And, and they're so real, and they're so real life. And there's one where you talk about how you put the tomatoes in the fridge again. <laughs> oh, Yeah. You know, and I just have to laugh out loud because that is one of my pet peeves. When anybody puts a tomato in the fridge, I'm like, it ruins the flavor. Don't you know that? And then I'm reading your poem about how you, you really messed up. You put the, you know, the tomato in the fridge again. And, and, and the whole poem is just, just phenomenal because it captures, it really captures life and, and it captures everything that you've said and what you've said too, Charlie, you know, that that in that, you know, so here's, here's the issue. It's not perfect. And then, you know, now what are we going to do about it? You know, and how do we move forward? And, but in such a really well, beautiful, loving way. Yeah. But let me say that, you know, the reason I wrote the poem, cause my feelings were really hurt. I, my wife went shopping, came home, you know, with a car full of groceries and had to run to the bathroom. So I thought, Hey, being good husband, empty the car. So I brought all of these groceries in. And then I have to say, it's like a little ego. I stood in the kitchen waiting for her to come in and say, what a wonderful husband. Oh, you saved me so much you know, time and all the trouble. And instead of a compliment and a thank you, she said, you don't put tomatoes in the refrigerator. 
So, you know, that's when I went to hire the lawyer and work out a divorce, <laughs> you know, and read the poem to her. And then, of course, she laughed over the poem. And it finishes with, I love her when she laughs. So we fire the lawyer and take the tomatoes out of the refrigerator. Right. But that's <laughs> what gets you through life. You know what I mean? Um, I could have really been angry at her for not uh, acknowledging what a nice guy I am and what I did. Uh, but to me, it, it, my brain doesn't work that way. So I ended up writing the poem. The two of us are laughing and we're together again. Yeah, it's it's really just it's such a phenomenal book. I'm just so thrilled, you know, to be to be a, a, a part of it, you know, in even a small way here. Um, Charlie, let's let me ask you to read your first poem in the book. The book opens with the section destiny and it opens with your poem. Can you read that for us, please? Yeah, and it's, it's cool we, we put this one first. There's a lot of times when I go to write a poem, it, it kind of just happens as I'm writing it. There's some times that I have like a, an idea formulated and then I'll, I'll write and, and work it as I go. Um, but this, this one that I'm going to read that we start the book with, it was that um, I, I do craft fairs and stuff to sell my nature photography. And one day I forgot to bring something to work on as I would be like, sitting there in between working with customers. So I just picked up a pen and paper and wrote what happened to be there in my head and come to me. Um, and that was this poem. So uh, it's cool we start with that one. Um, it's called Truth, Love, and Light. And it says, what if everything is predetermined to be undetermined? What if the universe has a plan for you to be yourself? What would you do if you were handcrafted out of stardust to be the best person you could be? With the blessings of the universe who autographed its creation with the twinkles in your eyes, may you go forth and be someone you love. Mm. I have the biggest smile on my face. That is one of my most favorite poems in the book. And I, I love all the poems, and but I love that one. And it's, Thanks. It, it, it is, it's, it's beautiful. And it is such a perfect opening to the conversation about life, right? What if everything is predetermined? Yeah. Um, that's that's yeah. why it's a kind of thing that connected us because I, I use the term perfectly imperfect right. and he used that term, you know, that, and so it was, again, even though we may use different words, we're both thinking the same thing. Yeah. So the book, the book walks people through a conversation between the two of you and alternating poems, starting with destiny, moving into emotion, relationship, nature, inner light, and, and, and ending with the section, Hello, God. And Bernie, you have the last poem in the book. Right. It's titled, you Hello, know, God. I keep getting ideas about this book. What we should have done is leave <laughs> blank pages throughout the book and say to people, as you're reading, write your poems on the blank pages. Mm. So if something pops into their head, you know, that they can do that. And maybe, I don't know, there's some way of just saying to people, it, there are no blank pages, but keep a pad with you. So yeah, that would be good. Something mm -hmm. in your heart or mind, make a note and then write about it when you have the time and, yeah. and do that. And I will add one more thing, then I'll read my poem, that when I first kept my journal, um, it was just full of tragedy all my pain and I used to hide it because I didn't want our children and my wife to read it, what I was going through. And um, one night I forgot to hide it. And the next day, my wife, Bobby said to me, there's nothing funny in your journal. I said, my life isn't funny. What are you talking about? <laughs> and she told me wonderful stories and jokes that I told them at the dinner table you know, funny things that happened all day, but I noticed I never put them in my journal. And, and the fact that I left it out, no coincidence again, she found it, helped redirect my thoughts in my life. Why not keep notes of the good things and write poems about them too? Mm -hmm. And so I would say to people, don't forget, if you're making notes, note when something nice happens. And, and, so it becomes a part of your life too. And hello, God, because I, I had to learn about faith and who my Lord is 
uh, those are things don't have time to talk about all of it. But I think for each of us, who is your God? Who is your Lord? For some people, it's impressing the neighbors, having more money. But for me, it, it's about creation. Hello, God. I am told prayer, meditation, and service will bring me into a direct relationship with God. Heavy stuff. Doesn't feel poetic. Maybe I'll just talk to God. Have you did that? Lily Tomlin says that's called prayer. Of course, she also says if God talks to you, it's called schizophrenia. <laughs> I guess I'm crazy then because God and I are buddies and on talking terms. We call on each other whenever we need a friend to talk to. God scares a lot of people. They can't listen because they want something. I have everything. So God isn't afraid to call on me and me on him. And I will add, just so people do think I'm schizophrenic, I literally hear voices. I've been hearing them for God knows how many decades, and they have made quite a difference in my life. One, I should have made a poem. Let me just quickly tell you this. I was out jogging. That's usually when I hear the voice, you know, when I'm doing something where I, I'm not working and thinking, uh, I can be driving or walking. But I, I was singing the song, but this is what I was singing. I am strong and thou art weak. And I heard a voice say, you have the lyrics wrong. It's thou art strong and I am weak, not the opposite. Um, and it was so funny because then the voice said, but you know what, Bernie, maybe I've done such a good job with you. You're right. So go ahead and keep singing. And I burst out laughing because, you know, you could say I'm schizophrenic, but I heard the voice say that. You have the lyrics wrong, but then, ah, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been, we have had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Bernie Siegel and Charlie Siegel, his grandson, about their new book, When You Realize How Perfect Everything Is. Um, and Bernie and Charlie, I have to say, this has just been just a delight. It, and, I'm, and I'm thrilled about the two of you continuing this conversation over and over and over again with, with, with many people, you know, about this beautiful book. Thank you. Can I tell Thanks. you one more story about Charlie and me? Um, years ago, Charlie is our firstborn grandchild. And he had beautiful dimples and a smile that, you know, you just fell in love with. And I had a picture of him and I used to show it at my lectures. I would put his picture up on a screen, you know, in front of hundreds of people and everybody'd go, oh. And then I'd say, now what if I put your picture up there? And then you don't hear, oh. And it's to get people to realize, uh, realize that that divine child is in all of us. It doesn't mean, you know, we're perfect, but it means that essence, that divine child is in us. And maybe that's what, why we're here right now, because maybe that's what I felt always in Charlie, that divine child. And then when he started sharing all these mystical, spiritual things with me, it was like, yeah, that's that kid. And I still have that lovely smiling face. And it's to get everybody to realize they are a child of God and love yourself. Mm -hmm. Because often, one last thing, I know I never stop talking, you'd show a picture of Charlie and everybody, oh, and I'm speaking at a high school graduation. Then I pick up one of the high school students who was on the stage getting an award and everybody laughs. I said, why are you going, ah, oh, when you see Charlie's face and you're laughing when I hold up a high school student? And we need to remember to keep seeing that divine child in each other. And I think that's what our poems are about. Mm, I, I couldn't, nice. couldn't agree more. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Agree more. Um, the book is called When You Realize How Perfect Everything Is by Dr. Bernie Siegel and Charlie Siegel. And it is a beautiful collection, a conversation between the two of them about life, about how the imperfections of life are what is perfect about life. And it's told through their short poetic writings. 
Charlie, tell everyone how they can get in touch with you and, and the Wisdom of the Ages store. What's the best way for people to find you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a lot of times at my mom's store, Wisdom of the Ages, and we have a website, wisdomoftheages.biz, it's B-I-Z uh, dot biz, and we're on Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff too. Um, and then I have my own pages on Facebook and Instagram for uh, author Charlie Siegel. Photography by SC is my uh, photography company. Um, so we're going to be selling the book, and right now we're taking pre-orders on the book through Wisdom of the Ages, and then it's going to be available um, through all kinds of booksellers internationally and everything also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's available wherever books are sold. And Bernie, share with out of our audience your website as right. well. Well, we're all, and also we're all, all in Connecticut, if people want to know where yeah. we are. Um, I used to do workshops uh, for cancer patients and others in Charlie and Jane's store. Um, and just a wonderful place to meet and share in the evening. Um, but um, my website is Bernie Siegel, S I E G E L M D dot com. You know, the double W W Bernie Siegel M D dot com. And, you know, even if you order things there, you'll get information about uh, Wisdom of the Ages and, you know, can order it through them. Um, and there are articles for people to read related to life and health and disease and just all the things that uh, I have found helpful to try to share with people. Even meditation tapes, my books, uh, all that can be ordered, you know, through the site and Charlie and his store and uh, make it easy for people. And they can communicate with us through, you know, that also. Thank you. Thank you both. It's been such an absolute delight having both of you, Dr. Bernie Siegel and Charlie Siegel on today's show. And I think Charlie and I need to have a radio program. I I yeah. that, as we listen, you know, we enjoy each other. <laughs> I yeah. think you do. I think you do. I think that'll be a, a, a beautiful next step to the work okay. we're doing together. <laughs> And I want to thank our audience for listening. You've been listening to the Sacred Stories podcast. I am your host, Reverend Patricia Caginello. And until next time, as always, I encourage you to write your sacred story well. <laughs>